Hi guys, it's your science teacher here with a video. This time it is on C4, which is quantitative chemistry. Also something new for my channel is I'm making revision maps for my videos. Please check out the video description in order to find these awesome resources. If you haven't already as well, please subscribe to my channel. It really, really helps me out. Thank you. Quantitative chemistry starts off um, by looking at how to calculate relative formula mass. And the way to do that is to uh, look at all of the masses, uh, all the atomic masses of each element inside a compound. Remember, a compound is two or more elements chemically joined together. So if we look at this uh, compound over here, this is sodium oxide. Um, and I need to calculate the relative formula mass of this compound. So I need to look at the relative atomic masses of each the element that makes up that compound. Um, if I look, sodium has a relative atomic mass of 23, and oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16. So if I, if I come back to this compound now uh, and try and calculate its relative formula mass, uh, sodium is 23, and there is two sodiums, and I can see that by the little two after it. So it'll be 23 times two uh, for sodium plus uh, 16 for oxygen, which equals 60. If, I, if we look down here, we've got an example as well of magnesium hydroxide. Um, and uh, magnesium hydroxide is a bit different because it has a bracket, and I'll tell you what you have to do with that uh, now. What you need to do with the bracket is you need to times everything inside the bracket by the number outside the bracket. So for magnesium hydroxide, uh, you have oxygen, which has a mass of 16, and hydrogen, which has mass of 1. So they're inside that bracket, it will be 17, and there is two of them, so that will equal 34, and you add it to the 24 for the mass of magnesium, and that should give you an answer of 58 for magnesium hydroxide. That would be its relative formula mass. Now you know how to calculate the relative formula mass of uh, different uh, compounds, you can now calculate uh, how many moles of a substance you have. And a mole is a really important unit for a chemist because it's working with the number of atoms uh, that is inside a compound or uh, an element. And because atoms are incredibly, incredibly tiny, uh, moles are incredibly useful because one mole of a substance always is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. I know it sounds an incredibly weird number but this is known as Avogadro's constant um, and it's an incredibly important number uh, for uh, scientists. Also with a, a mole it's important to know you can calculate it from the relative atomic mass of an atom. So for example if you have sodium uh, which has a relative atomic mass of 23 um, therefore uh, to have one mole of sodium, it would be 23 grams of sodium. Uh, so, so it's quite easy to calculate from relative atomic masses how many grams of something you need in order to have one mole of it. So how do you calculate um, a mole and how do you calculate a mole of compounds? Uh, what you need to do is you need to use this calculation triangle. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I really like calculation triangles. Um, and to calculate a mole, it equals the mass of something divided by the RFM. And let's look at that in practice with a worked example. So for this example below, uh, if I wanted to calculate how many moles uh, are in 8 grams of magnesium oxide, uh, what I'd need to do is calculate the relative formula mass of magnesium oxide, which is simply 24 uh, plus uh, 16, which equals 40. Uh, and that is measuring grams per mole. And then to work out the number of moles, all I do is the mass, which is 80 grams, divided by 40 grams per mole. And that will give me my answer, which is 2 moles. Now, uh, you can actually calculate how many moles uh, of are, are reacting from a balanced symbol equation. Uh, so let's balance this equation. Uh, it's with magnesium and oxygen to make magnesium oxide. And if you've watched uh, any of my previous screencasts, you may have seen that this is the way I like to balance equations. So I count up the number of magnesiums on that side and oxygens on that side. 
magnesium's on this side and oxygen's on that side. Now you can see that the number of oxygens don't bounce up. Now I can't change the number at the end, that doesn't work, okay, because that changes the compound. That'd be magnesium dioxide and that, that's not right. So um, I need to change uh, the numbers at the start if I'm going to do anything. So now I have two magnesiums, two oxygens, so I'm happy now my oxygens are balanced. However, my magnesiums no longer are, but now it is balanced. So I'm happy with the fact that my uh, my equation is balanced. And now I said it relates to moles. And the reason uh, why I said that, because it does, um, this shows that two moles of magnesium reacts with one mole of oxygen uh, to create two moles of magnesium oxide. It's also important uh, to remember that mass is conserved in a reaction as well. So if I had 3.4 grams of magnesium uh, at the start and I make 4.2 grams of magnesium oxide, that means I must have uh, reacted 0 0.8 grams of oxygen to make that magnesium oxide. Now I said mass is always conserved in a reaction, uh, but we can actually calculate how much mass uh, we should make from a reaction uh, using uh, moles and theoretical yields. So I can, I can do this uh, calculation for what mass of iron can be made if 3.2 grams of iron oxide uh, is reacted with an excess amount of carbon. Now the fact that I've said an excess amount of carbon means that this must be my limiting reagent. This, is, uh, this means that this is controlling how much of a product I'm making. Uh, now same with the last example, I need to balance the equation first uh, before I do anything. Now if you can't do anything other than balancing the equation in an exam, make sure you do uh, just balance the equation uh, even if you can't do all the calculations that come after it, um, it it's important to get at least some of the marks. So I have two uh, iron, I have three oxygen, I have one carbon on that side, I have one iron, two oxygens and one carbon. First things first, I would uh, put a two in front of my uh, iron oxide. The reason for that is to make the oxygens an even number because <coughs> carbon dioxide, you, you need to make it an even number so that ox uh, that, that can fit into it. Uh, so there is four iron now and I now have six oxygen on this side. Now I can balance the iron so I need to have uh, another, I can put four in front of that and now I'm happy with my irons. Now let's balance my oxygens next. Uh, so I've got six on this side uh, I need to have six on this side, so let's put a three in front of my CO2, uh, which now gives me six oxygens and three carbons. And finally, let's balance the carbons. Now I've got three on that side, and I have a fully balanced equation. Now I've uh, calculated the moles of iron oxide. What I need to do now is uh, calculate... Um, Now I've balanced the equation, I need to calculate the moles of iron oxide that I have. Um, and to do that, I need to use the relative formula mass of iron oxides because moles equals mass over RFM. And the RFM of iron oxide will equal 56 times 2 plus 16 times 3. And you can see that from the uh, formula up here. You've got 2 iron, which has a mass of 56 and three oxygen, which has a mass of 16. Um, and if you do that calculate, it equals 160. Now to calculate the moles of iron oxide, it will equal 3.2 grams divided by that 160, which is equal to 0 0.02 moles. Now to look at the amount of iron I will make, we go back to the top equation and we need to look at the uh, ratio of iron oxide to iron. So it's in a ratio of 2 to 4. For every 2 moles of iron oxide, you're going to make 4 moles of iron. Now uh, if you simplify that, that's 1 to 2, isn't it? 2 to 4. So you're making double the amount of iron. So I'm going to make my moles of iron that I can theoretically make will be 0 0.04 moles of iron. Now, in order to calculate my mass of iron that I can uh, theoretically uh, make, um, 
I now need to rearrange the mole equation, which gives me uh, RFM times moles. Uh, the RFM of I is 56. So it'll be 56 times by 0 0.04, which gives me a answer of 2.2 grams. Hopefully you followed that along with me. I know that this can be a little bit tricky, so make sure you do lots and lots of practice uh, with questions like this, especially if you're going for the grade sevens, eights and nines. On the last slide, uh, we said that we could make 2.2 grams of iron from the reaction of iron oxides uh, with carbon. Uh, however, it's very unlikely that you would actually ever make 2.2 uh, grams. Often you'll make less uh, because uh, you, you can never carry out a reaction to its fullest. Also, sometimes you get a bit of transfer loss. Um, and it usually results in this value being lower at, at an amount of something like 1.9 grams of iron. Even that's a decent yield for the reaction. Um, to calculate the percentage yield, so how much you make compared to the theoretical, uh, you do the actual uh, yield divided by the theoretical and that gives you a percentage yield for your reaction. Uh, and uh, let's do that for that reaction then. The percentage yield of that reaction would equal uh, 1.9 divided by 2.2, which equals 0 0.86. And then to turn it into a percent, all you need to do is times it by 100, and that will equal 86%. And as you can imagine, percentage yields are massively important for chemists because they need to know how successful their reactions are that they're carrying out and whether they're losing a lot of their reaction reactants uh, through the process that they are carrying out. To decide which chemical reaction a chemist should use in order to make a product, they often look at the atom economy of the reaction, which is how much of a percent uh, of um, product ends up as useful product. And basically what I mean by that is how much of a percent of your product is useful products and not wasted. Um, so let's have a look at how to calculate this. As you as you can see, I've uh, included the relative formula mass of each of the compounds uh, below uh, the compound that, that it's from. So um, let, let's have a look how to calculate this. Let's see how much um, starting material we have. So if I add 160, um, there's two of them, you can see that from the number of moles, uh, so it's 160 grams per mole times two uh, is 320 and I add that 320 to three times 12, uh, that will equal 356 grams per mole. So that is how much uh, starting reagent we have. And uh, when we were looking at this reaction, we said that iron was a useful product. It probably is. Carbon dioxide is often a waste product of many reactions. Uh, so let's calculate how much iron we have. We have 56 uh, times by four because there's four moles and that equals two to four. Now, in order to calculate uh, the atom economy, you do the useful, the amount that's useful, divided by all of the starting material. So that's 356. And then to turn it into a, a percentage, you can times it by 100, or you can just leave it as a decimal. If you leave it as a decimal, it's always going to be less than one. So for this reaction, it would equal 0 0.63. And to turn it into a percent, you just times it by 100. So this would be 63% atom economy for this reaction. Now, if we looked at that other reaction of uh, Mg uh, going uh, 2Mg plus O2 going to MgO, because all of the... Uh, reaction is making useful products. If you were looking to make magnesium oxide, this reaction has an atom economy of 100%. Now, if you're going into industry, uh, you obviously want the highest uh, atom economy. So this is a really good reaction uh, for, for having such a high atom economy. And the one producing iron, maybe it's not such a good reaction. 
A lot of what we've looked at so far is uh, of solids. However, what happens if we're looking at aqueous solutions um, when we dissolve something in something else? Um, well, we get a term called concentration. And uh, concentration is can either be calculated by doing the mass uh, divided by the volume or doing uh, the moles divided by the volume. So it can be mass or moles. So it, it depends which one, um, which units you are told to do in a question basically to whether you use mass or moles. I like to think of concentration um, in the terms of orange squash. Uh, here, over here, I've got a very concentrated um, solution and over here I've got a, a dilute solution. Uh, dilute means that I don't have much solid uh, dissolved in the liquid. Concentrated means that I have lots and lots of that solid uh, dissolved in the liquid. To make something even more dilute, all you need to do is add more of the liquid. And to make something more concentrated, all you need to do is add more of the solid if we're talking about an aqueous solution. Another important thing to remember is converting between centimetres cubed and decimetres cubed because the volume can be represented either as centimetres cubed or decimetres cubed. So there's a few units you can represent concentration in. You could represent it in grams per centimetres cubed or grams per decimeter cubed, or you could represent it in moles per centimeters cubed, or moles per decimeters cubed. If you are doing combined science, you can stop the video now. If you are doing triple science and GCSE chemistry, you need to continue on for a little bit longer, where we are now gonna go over a technique called titration. Uh, and titration is used to calculate an unknown uh, concentration of either acid or alkali. So in this bottom here, I can say that I've got an unknown concentration of acid. Now it could be the other way around and I could have uh, my acids, my alkali actually in this conical flask. But for this example, I'm going to have the acids in my conical flask. And that means that I've got my alkali in uh, this burette. And that's what it's called. That's the thing that adds the alkali to the acid. And I also have an indicator in, in here, which is going to tell me when the alkali has neutralized the acid. So let's look at an example to see how I can calculate the concentration of my unknown acids. Uh, here it said that it took 30.2 centimeters cubed of 1.5 uh, moles per decimeter cubed uh, sodium hydroxide to neutralize 20 centimeters cubed of an unknown concentration of hydrochloric acid. So let's, let's put in the things that I do know then. I always uh, do NCV for these examples uh, and I think that's the best way to do it. So I know the volume of al alkali, that's 30.2 centimeters cubed. I know the concentration, that is 1.5 moles per decimeter cubed, but I don't know the number of moles. I don't know the number of moles of acid. I don't know the concentration of acid. However, I do know the volume is 20 centimeters cubed. Now, let's uh, first things first, we need to convert this volume into decimeters cubed because this M uh, stands for moles per decimeter cubed. That's important to remember. Um, so I need to convert my volume into decimeters cubed if I'm going to calculate my number of moles of alkali and therefore number of moles of acid. And to do that, all you need to do is divide by a thousand. So 30.2 divided by. Now, if I rearrange the concentration triangle uh, that we had on the last slide, uh, which told me that concentration equals number of moles, uh, divided by volume, that means that concentration times the volume will give me my number of moles, so that'll be 0 0.032 times 1.5, that equals 0 0.048 moles. And um, because the equation is balanced, uh, I can see that from up here, I've got one Na on this side, one Na on this side, one chlorine on this side, one chlorine on this side, uh, two oxygens, uh, one oxygen, I mean, on each side and two hydrogens on each side. Uh, it's clearly a balanced equation, so the number of moles 
on each side is the same as we are in a one-to-one -one ratio of acid to alkali. Um, now I can calculate the concentration of my unknown acids by using this triangle, concentration equals number of moles divided by volume, which is equal to 2.4 moles per decimeters cubed. One thing we are yet to explore in this video is gases and how to calculate the number of moles in a gas. And it's a bit different uh, with gases as a one mole of glass always occupies the same amount of volume, either 24 decimeters cubed or 24,000 uh, cm cubed. And you kind of have to remember that number of 24 decimeters cubed. Um, and in order to calculate the moles of a gas, in a certain area all you need to do is the volume that it takes up divided by either 24 or 2000 uh, 24000 uh, depending on whether it's in decimeters cubed or uh, cm cubed now this is the end of the video uh, i hope you enjoyed it uh, please remember to either like or uh, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye